come back. Today we're going to do the lower control arms on the Volvo. Uh, the struts and drive shafts going to be a different video. Uh, just because it's going to be too long anyway. So uh, we got the lower control arms here and this pushing is yeah, sort of okay. Uh, the other side is really badly worn, so all you need to do is basically get this joint out, get the bolt of this one out and you can take it out. You need to remove the, uh, if you got Xenon HID lights, you need to take this one off here. And uh, the trick is buying no standard control arms and just fit that thing because the other ones are, as far as I could see, at least... 20-30% more so just get, get the bolt out and uh, fit this little bracket to the new arm any standard Volvo V50 C30 um, S40 Ford Focus anything will have the same control arms there's, there's no difference um, the only difference is the lower power car has got 18 millimeter um, Bolt joints, so the bottom diameter is 18. The higher power cars got the 21 millimeter bolt joints. That's the only difference. So you need, to, you just need to look at the diameter for the bolt joints. Uh, the, the the height sensor is only on the right hand side. The left hand is always the same. Um, I paid, I think, 50 pounds, 45 pounds, something like that. So let's make 60 dollars for the pair which is uh, good, so I just need to make sure I'm in the right spot here and then just pump it up uh, because for taking the other stuff off I had the jack stand right under that so it's gonna go to another place obviously um, yeah again the other stuff wheel, strut, things like that uh, drive shaft, is green. It's that's gonna be a separate video right uh, Let's get the bolts out. Bolts out on here. I don't know if it's visible. And there's another one here, which has to come out. It might be a bit tough, but yeah, we'll give it a try. When you take the brake calipers off, make sure you put them on some blocks or something, because otherwise all the strain is on the brake lines. Uh, that's pretty much it. You don't need to take the strut out or the drive shaft out if you replace them. You just need to knock off the bottom bolt joint and take them off, obviously check the car up. Uh, the reason why the stuff is out because everything gets replaced anyway. Alright, uh, let me get the tools and uh, start going here. They come out quite easy on mine here. There is some Loctite on it, or was some Loctite on it. And there is a 15 millimeter. I don't think I'm gonna get to the front with the impact. There's probably no way. So, uh, yeah, the, the engine is in the way. So you need a ratchet and a. That's a 17 millimeter. The rear ones are 15. So that, yeah, the front bolt needs a little bit convincing. You need a super short extension or a long socket and then something a little bit longer because uh, the breaker bar is too long because I haven't checked the car up far enough so what we gotta do is it sits in here goes all the way through here and uh, let me get that out and uh, then we should have this thing in hand so here we got it out the bolt was okay -ish. it was a bit stiff at the, at the beginning but it was okay so and here we got the control arm we need to remove this thing and fit it to the other one uh, don't know if it's original but if they wear usually these rubbers wear out and obviously if you curb badly or something like that you're gonna bend them because they are relatively flimsy for such a powerful car but that's what it is 
don't know if they're original or not. We'll do some investigation. But the bolt joint is... This side is fairly okay, but the other one isn't. So let me take that into the workshop. Are we gonna swap that bracket over and fit the new one? So the bracket is held with that six millimeter bolt. <laughs> and there is a nut behind. I wonder how you actually get that in because I don't have such long fingers to get that in here. Anyway, but the, yeah, the only difference is that if you look at the new one, <coughs> it's got the it's got the same hole pattern. <coughs> Everything is the same, so they must have a way. They must have a way of getting this nut in here, but I don't know how they do it, no idea. Yeah, look, the holes are there, so it's just setting the bracket and the nut. This nut looks pretty new, so maybe someone did it before, who knows. But how are you gonna get that in? There's no way. We'll figure it out. So we got an idea. We're using a spanner and a flange nut. So you can't go through. And then just trying to get the spanner under the hole. Here we go. Here it is. And all we need to do is hold it and then just get it started. Like so. And then tighten it up with a spanner, chopped on. And then the trick is getting the spanner out again. But uh, it went in so it comes out as well. So just use a ring spanner, a flange nut, and it works actually. We give that we gave that a lick of paint. So ready to fit. So here we have it just gonna grease the bolts with some copper grease. Uh, especially on the shaft, especially on the shaft, uh, so it doesn't cease because they might come out again at some point. So now fit the front one first so it stays in place. It's the one which goes here and then put the rear ones in and we're good to go. Uh, can't really film that right now. So I don't know if this works in. Don't know if there is anything visible. Let me try it. So now get the thing up here. Get it set on the rear. Put it in the front and uh, find the bolt hole. Which is probably the more challenging part to find that bolt hole. Oh. I know we're in the way here, but I think what I can do with it. Yeah. It probably needs a bit of force from the bottom because it's too low, so I can't really get it in uh, with one hand. So let me try it and then we'll come back. Okay, the front one is a bit of a pick. You'd think it's in, but it's not because it's got a about a stop which is about 10 millimeters long, which has to go in first, and then you think it's in, but it's not. Uh, I ended up using a long extension and the impact from the front so you can actually get there and just wiggle around and while, while it was turning, so it's in. Uh, the problem is the position of the rear clamp is springy so yeah anyway it's in we need to torque it up to spec once the drive shaft is in don't forget the adjuster for the headlights so this was the replacement of the lower control arm uh, technically a simple job three bolts plus the um, bolt joint and if you have HID lights you need to fit that bracket as seen before, it actually works better than expected if you use the right tools and the right hardware. 
because the other knot was a non flange it was a normal one not a flange knot I wonder how they got that in here probably with some tape on the spanner or so I don't know anyway done and uh, yeah now it comes the dry shaft so oh, this one came out quite easy actually because there is better access uh, <laughs> You can see the board is split here. Uh, I think when they changed the shock absorber, they split that board because they used the picket fork to cut the bolt chain over. Anyway, uh, we're gonna try, we're gonna put this one in, um, and then we'll see. Uh, I think this time we try it a bit different. Put the first, the front one first, because I had some trouble to get the bolt aligned. On the other side, I just sprayed it down a little bit so because it was a bit rusty, and yeah, now you can get there. Um, yeah, so try the front one first because they got a, a recess on the thread, so, yeah, so they should get, get going easy, but it didn't really. Uh, torque is 170 on that, and uh, 60 plus. 90 degrees, I think, on the other. What's it? Yeah, and the 75 at the front, and the rear is 60 plus 90 degrees. But uh, I don't know because the, they don't look like stretch bolts. I don't know. They're really Loctite. I don't know. I don't have bolts it didn't come with bolts anyway um, yeah maybe it's this is stretching I don't know we'll see uh, we do it to spec 60 plus 90 degrees uh, because this is stretching before the bolt was stretched so it should be fine all right let's try that well we finally got it in uh, you need to set the rear ones first and then the front one there's no way Otherwise the alignment of the bolt here is just miles out and I had to push it quite hard and lift it. Uh, it depends on how these rubber bushings are actually sitting in this thing. Uh, there is a possibility that something is bent here. Not much, I would say a few millimeters. But I don't know. It, the other one was far easier. It was just this one yeah, it was a bit tough to get it in. Um, yeah, it's the thing is, it's only located by the bolts. There is a little bit of play here and there. Um, I think we carry on tomorrow. It's late dinner time. We're gonna, tomorrow, we're gonna put the drive shaft in with our sleeve. And I don't know if it's visible, but you can, you can see that there's a recess here which has about the same angle as the other one. There's an o ring. So this diameter is larger, which supports the drive shaft. And if this support isn't there, uh, it can wobble. And also, the, the water can go in, because the O-ring has no effect if the diameter is too small. So it's just a poor design of that drive shaft. But obviously, they don't care, <laughs> uh, but I do. So we need to clean that tomorrow. Make sure everything is clean inside. Just use a little um, brass wire brush and then we grease it and then hopefully the drive shaft goes in because that's always the challenge to get it in. But we'll see. Yeah. Everything looks good. There's not much corrosion. There's a little bit of corrosion I can feel here. So we're gonna uh, look at that. It's all rust. Uh, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.